guys, Joel Pru from PWS Studios and the Home Recording Network, where I'm trying to help you make label quality music from your homes. In my last video, I talked about some of the basics of compression and showed you visually how it works, but I figured I should show you how I actually apply it to my tracks. So I'm going to break it down for you guys with my six steps to mix compression. Enjoy. Alright guys, so I'm going to be showing you some compression on piano today. This is a song by a local artist, Stephen Piotrowski from Buffalo. And this song's just some piano and some vocals. There are some drums in it, but I'm not going to get into that now. Um, so I'm just going to play you what the piano and the main vocals sound like together. Oh, then I still feel the same Just with an extra dose of pain All right, so the first thing we want to think about when we go to compress this piano is the style of the song. So this is a pretty simplistic song. There's not a lot of instruments in it. So I want to leave a lot of dynamic range in this piano, which means I don't want to compress it too hard. In like rock music, when there's a ton of guitar and bass and other instruments, I tend to compress a lot more. But since this is such a simple song, I'm not going to compress this piano too hard. Now, with even just using a little bit of compression on this piano, we can really glue this instrument together really nicely and get it to sound even more powerful. And I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing we're going to do is pull up our compressor. And I'm going to use this FG401 from Slate Digital because I used it in my last video. If you want to know uh, the basics of a compressor, go back to the last video I had on compression where I can walk you through that. But I'm going to use this because I figure it might be easier for people to follow along. So the first step in my six-step guide to mix compression is set your ratio. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this at 4 to 1. And I usually start at about 4 to 1 and kind of dial in some compression and make adjustments from there. So if I need more compression, I'll, I'll pull it up a little bit. Uh, if it's less, I'll, I'll pull it down. And, you know, maybe on the master bus or something, I'll, I'll usually go about 2 to 1. But I'm going to start at 4 to 1. So step 2 is to set your attack time. And we kind of got a guess here and maybe fiddle around with it afterwards but right off the bat I'm gonna make it kind of a medium slow attack because it's such a simplistic song I don't want to clamp down on these transients too much so we'll leave it kind of open and kind of make it a medium slow attack and we can fiddle it with it later if we want to make adjustments so my rule of thumb here for setting your attack is usually for drums I want a really slow attack because we want the punch of those drums to poke through. For mostly everything else, I usually start kind of around a medium attack. So guitar, bass, vocals. I usually put it somewhere around here. But for this piano, we'll, we'll try this for now. So step three is to set your release time. And I'm going to stick with this setting right here, which is this compressor's second fastest setting. So remember, this is how quickly the compressor lets go of the compression after the signal dips below the threshold that we set. So I don't want this compressor hanging on to the compression too long because I still want to maintain a good amount of dynamic range for this piano. And to tell you the truth, most of my release times on my compressors are either fast or medium fast. I usually don't have too slow of a release time on, on any of my tracks. Step four is going to be to dial back your threshold. So this is what actually makes the compressor start working. If we play it with it set at zero dB here, nothing's going to happen.
so we're getting no gain reduction but what we're going to do is we're going to play the track and then dial this back until we think it sounds good so we just want to add a little bit of compression we don't want it to sound overly compressed but I'll, I'll dial it way back and show you what it sounds like but we just want it to kind of glue the piano together so here we go And that sounds pretty good right there. So when we pulled this threshold all the way back here, it sounded way too compressed. It was unnatural. So we want a kind of a natural compression for this song. We don't want to totally smash or squash this piano. So it sounded good right about here. Um, you just want to make sure not to look at the gain reduction meter. You want to use your ears to hear what sounds good and not get too distracted by the meter up here. So step five is going to be to add your makeup gain. So as you can tell here, the piano got a little bit quieter. So I'm going to just show you. I'm going to start with it on and turn it off. When I turn it off, you'll hear how, how much louder the piano gets. So we lost some volume, so we want to use this makeup gain to add the volume that we lost back to the piano. So I'm just going to play this and then add some makeup gain back and I want to get it to be about the same volume as it was before it was compressed. So I'm just going to play it. That sounds about right to me. So we really didn't even add that much compression to this, but the piano is starting to sound better overall. We're basically turning down the volume of the louder notes he played while raising the volume of the quieter notes he played, and it's giving the piano an overall fuller sound. So I'm going to play it for you. I'll start with it off and just listen for when I turn this compressor on. The piano sounds more full. You can hear more of the low end. So here we go. And it's a really subtle difference, but it it really sounds great. You can really hear the quieter notes he was playing, which is what we want here. We, we just wanted to add some glue. We didn't want to over compress this. So step six would be to adjust accordingly. So say you wanted less compression, you could, you know, raise the threshold up or you could even, you know, bring the ratio down a bit. Um, or say you wanted to make it stick out in the mix more, you can, you know, make this the fastest release possible. If you wanted to push it back further in the mix, you could, you know, maybe make this a little bit slower of a release. But I think this sounds great right here. Guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to download your free Ultimate Home Studio Mix Guide. I made this for you guys so you could start getting your mixes sounding better. There's a lot of great information in there. And be sure to reach out if you have any questions or if you need any help with your mixes. Thanks.